In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My dearly beloved in Christ, um, the Gospel of St. Matthew today was modified by the modernist because it talks about the kings coming to adore the Christ child. And um, and then it was, also it says that Herod said, let me know where he's at and then I'll adore him too. But they had to rewrite that because um, that's not part of their beliefs, the, the adoration of Christ. And then secondly, in the gospel it says, Falling down, they found the child with Mary, his mother. There's many spiritual writers that tell us the same thing. As the three kings found the child with Mary's mother, as the shepherds found the child with Mary, his mother, so we too will find Christ, but his mother is always there. And at the foot of the cross, at Bethlehem, uh, with the coming of the three kings. And then uh, one other thing, even though there was such an uproar with three kings and their camels and their whole caravan coming into Jerusalem to find the Christ child, and said all Jerusalem was uh, disturbed. The scribes, the chief priests, said exactly where Christ would be born. It's only five miles south from Jerusalem, but there's no record that any of them went to see the Christ child to adore him even though they precisely pointed out the place where uh, he was to be born. And then it helps under, us understand the opposition from that Christ faced from the chief priests, scribes, Pharisees, because even at his birth, when there was such a magnificent thing with the star and the three kings and the scriptures, and they rejected all of that. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen. My Dearly beloved in Christ, the word epiphany applied to our Lord means the manifestation of his divinity. On this day, we celebrate the arrival and the adoration of the three Gentile kings and the precious gifts they offer to the infant Savior. Profane history informs us that at this particular period of history, when the Messiah would be born, there prevailed throughout the entire East a conviction which was the outcome of prophecies that at a not far distant date, a powerful monarch would appear in Judea and eventually gain dominion over the then known world. Beyond the boundaries of Israel, there were nations who were expecting the advent of a redeemer. And it was but natural then that the Magi who were familiar with the prophets and were learned should be on the alert for any inkling or indication that would suggest his coming. Mindful, too, of Balaam's prophecy that a star shall rise out of Jacob and a scepter shall spring up from Israel. Since they were keen astronomers, they attentively searched the starry skies for the appearance of some heavenly body which would indicate the arrival of the great king. The three wise men were familiar with the relative positions in courses of the heavenly bodies. Thus, when they beheld anything in the shape of a prodigy, the remembrance of the prediction of a new star would instantly lead them to suspect its connection with the prophecy of Balaam. That a strange, brilliant phenomenon among the stars should be taken as a signal of the birth of the king was in strict accordance with the tradition and beliefs of the times. My dear and beloved in Christ, when the Magi saw the heavenly message from God's sign, the miraculous star, they prepared for the long journey to adore the newborn Redeemer. The omen seen by the wise men was not a star in the strict sense of the word because stars are fixed. And the nearest of them is far too remote and far too immense to point to any particular house or spot like Bethlehem. St. John Chrysostom suggests that it was an angel who assumed the form of a star. The miraculous shining prodigy led the Magi to the Christ child as a pillar of fire led the chosen people to the promised land. The journey of the three kings was very long and difficult, likely lasting several months or years. 
and covering up to 700 miles. Since they were going to visit a king, the trip required much preparation. In addition, traveling through the desert on camels is slow and uncomfortable. In the east, a caravan only travels by night, for the excessive heat of the sun makes it practically impossible to proceed by day. During the daytime, it was customary for the travelers to rest, and it afforded the, an opportunity for the camels to pasture. The regal appearance of the three wise men with their long caravan of he- heavily laden camels created quite a sensation among the inhabitants of Jerusalem. They were shocked when the kings asked, Where is he that's born king of the Jews? Although Herod had reigned for 36 years, he had no intention of resigning. When Herod learned of the arrival of the Magi, he was troubled and questioned the chief priests and scribes regarding the birthplace of the Messiah. My dearly beloved in Christ, they unanimously said, In Bethlehem of Judea, because the prophet Micah had written centuries earlier, And thou, Bethlehem, of the land of Judah, are not the least among the princes of Judah, for out of thee shall come forth the captain that shall rule my people Israel. St. Matthew tells us the Magi came from the east to worship the great infant king. The three Magi were kings or personages of high rank. According to the historian St. Bede, Melchior was an old man, wore a long beard and had white hair. Gaspar was of a ruddy complexion, but beardless, while Balthazar was dark complexion and in the very prime of life. Upon their arrival, they adored the infant Jesus and offered him royal gifts. Melchior's gift was gold, Gaspar's was myrrh, and Balthazar's frankincense. During Jesus' time, the value of gold was an equivalent of $600 per pound, The value of frankincense was only slightly less, while myrrh was $4,000 per pound. Each of the three gifts had deep spiritual significance. Although the precise homeland of the three wise men is unknown, King David refers to those who brought gifts to our Redeemer as kings of the Arabians. Myrrh and frankincense are products of Arabia. Gold, a traditional gift for kings, was property of royalty and a form of tribute. It indicated that Christ is king. The fragrant smoke of frankincense was used in worship and shows that our Lord is divine. Myrrh, which is used in burials, foretold Christ's death upon the cross and signified his human nature. My dearly beloved in Christ, when the infant Jesus was presented in the temple 40 days after his birth, Our Lady gave the offering of the poor because she had not yet been visited by the three kings, nor had she received their valuable gifts. Therefore, scripture scholars teach that the visit of the three kings occurred after this event. And then, of course, by this time, they were not in the stable. They had a place to live in Bethlehem. There's an interesting story regarding the church of the Nativity in Bethlehem that was erected in 329 A.D. by St. Helena, over the birthplace of Jesus Christ. Although Persian soldiers destroyed many of the churches in the Holy Land in 614, this building was spared. When the Persians entered it for destruction, they saw a mosaic of the three kings dressed in Persian garb on the floor of this church and left it unharmed out of respect for their ancestors who had adored the infant Jesus. In closing, it's believed that all three wise men in time were martyred. St. Helena, the mother of the Emperor Constantine, brought the relics of the three kings to Constantinople in the 4th century. They were later moved to Milan, Italy. In the 12th century, the Holy Roman Emperor Frederick Barbarossa gave them to the Archbishop of Cologne, Germany. A cathedral was built for the relics where they remain today. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, amen.